Hey Marvel United fans, welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thanks so much for watching. Before we get this video underway, uh, all the little fiddly YouTube stuff, if you have fun with us today, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. Feel free to give some love to that subscribe button and all that greatness. And if you think I'm okay, well, guess what? This very Friday, February 24th, 2023, you will be able to go to Amazon and purchase the fantasy series that I wrote, We Were Wizards. You'll be able to buy that on Amazon all over the world. And so far, two of the books in the series will be available with many more to come in the near future. So with all that being said, I mentioned in some of the other Marvel United videos talking about uh, a storage solution, uh, but it's a very unorthodox one. So we have so much time to kill over the coming year uh, that I figured, hey, we all are in the same boat. We're all waiting for the same goodies to arrive over the next months. I will have some more videos for you uh, that are all Marvel United goodness, and this is the first of many. So let's talk storage. Now, I'm going to preface this right off the bat by telling everybody right now that this storage solution is not for everyone. It's absolutely not for everyone. In fact, when you see what it is and how it works, I would say, I'm going to hazard a guess here, three quarters of the people watching this are going to see how it works and their reaction is going to be, no, I hate that. And that's totally okay. I get it. You will probably not like the way I store Marvel United because it comes down to a couple of simple factors. Factor number one, I sleeve almost every card. I don't sleeve the threat cards. I don't know why. I just never felt like I needed to sleeve those. I just, I sleeve all the hero cards and I sleeve all the master plan cards. I use very thin sleeves, just the clear dragon shield, perfect fit sleeves, but sleeves still take up space. And there's only so much space in those card trays. So that's factor number one, is that my sleeves end up taking up space. Factor number two, the factor that I know everybody is going to absolutely hate, is this. I keep all the boxes. I do. I just, I love the boxes so much. These are, as far as I'm concerned, they are works of art. I mean, look at this. This is a box where Kingpin is flying through the air about to punch somebody. I could never in good conscience, throw away anything that has art of the kingpin flying through the air about to punch somebody. It's just not happening. These boxes are all beautiful. I love them to death. I could stare at them for hours. And I get that they take up a ton of room. I understand that. And I'm not a person with a ton of room. I don't have a giant home. In fact, not only do I live in a small cramped basement apartment, I live in somebody else's small cramped basement apartment. So the house upstairs isn't even mine. So I have completely no room to work with. I understand that space is at a premium and it is foolish of me. It is absolutely foolish of me to hang on to these boxes, but they are just gorgeous. I can't let them go. And I have found a comfortable out of the way place to store them. Especially like, look at this, come on, look at this. I mean, you've got all the characters and their names are written in their own colors. How the hell could I throw this away if I had an, like another option? ahead of me. How could I do that? I, the answer is I couldn't. I could not do that. And I'm very glad that I was able to find ways to keep these boxes in my life. So the reason I brought up this particular promo box is the promo boxes were the key to why I store things the way that I store them. Because unlike the regular core boxes and expansion boxes, the promo box gives you no extra room in the card trays. And that goes for this one and the X-Men one. There's just enough room for all the cards. And once you sleeve them, you have overflow. And it's not hey, overflow. Uh, it's not going to work. So how can you sleeve all the cards, which I know a lot of you do, while also keeping everything in boxes, which I know very few of you do. So for the few of you that like to hang on to these and have enough space to do so, let's go to the other room and take a look at the storage solution. And maybe, just maybe, one person watching might think, hey, that ain't so bad. So follow me. Okay, so primarily, this was all about, for me at least, saving space in these stretch goal boxes. There's one here, it's open. There's the X-Men one, it's already sealed. Because the stretch goal boxes are the ones that, even though they're the biggest, they don't leave you any extra space at all, because it's chock full of stuff already. 
And like I said, I sleeve the cards here. So sleeving means you end up taking up more space than usual. So after having sleeved everything in this box, it was overflowing a little bit. So this is how I went about consolidating everything and saving space. What I essentially did was move stuff into boxes where I felt they were more appropriately suited. So for example, cloak and dagger, like you can see cloak is in here. Cloak didn't come in this box. Cloak actually came with dagger in that box, but I'm sure they are mutants through some part of the lore, but I always associated cloak and dagger less with the X-Men and more with the street level heroes. And those guys are all in here. So I just put cloak and dagger with the street level heroes and villains in this box. And that takes two decks out of there right away. Uh, and that's how you'll notice uh, it's all about how many decks of cards can I remove from there and from there. The minis always stay where the minis come from because there's a perfect slot for them, right? No other slot is going to fit Kingpin. This man shops at Mr. Big and Tall anyway. You can't find a good enough slot for Kingpin except where he comes from. So the minis stay where they are. It's all about moving decks around. So first let's look at the X-Men core box because there was actually a little bit of room in this box when all was said and done. So what I did in here was pretty simple. All Everybody's sleeved and everybody fits because there was extra space for sleeving. Simon thought of that. What I added here was just some villains. And without having to take out all the decks, I'll just show you here. I, of course, kept all the villains from the core box. So Magneto and Mystique and Sabretooth and Juggernaut are all here. I'm sorry, I should not be spilling those like that. But then I also put in Dark Phoenix and the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, just because it's thematic for me. Dark Phoenix is Jean Grey, and she's in this box. So I kept a Jean Grey with Jean Grey. And the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, they always go hand in hand with Magneto and Mystique. So it fits. It feels like it's appropriate for them to be in here. Their minis have to be in a different box, because such is the nature of the storage. But at least that takes out two extra decks from that box that I can put in here to save space. Here are two other ones that were simple, no-brainers, right? They just totally made sense, was, okay, for an example, the Infinity Gauntlet came with all the Black Order in it, except for Corvus Glaive. He came in that stretch goal box there. But here's the thing, guys. There was plenty of room to add Corvus Glaive's cards here. Even when they're sleeved, yeah, it's, it's not perfectly flush with the thing they give you, but it's not gonna be spilling all over the place. And I had ample, I don't know where he is. He's in here somewhere. There he is. The Corvus Glaive's cards all fit. All the decks are in there. That took a nice deck out of there. And boom, there you go. Over here in the Sinister Six, I did the same thing. I took the Rhino's cards out of there and I put them in here because Rhino is a classic Spider-Man villain. So to me, thematically, it would make perfect sense that he would be in this box with other classic Spider-Man villains. And he fits snugly in there, there are his cards right there underneath everybody else. So there was ample room. In fact, you'll see when I put those down there, there's actually even a tiny bit of room for maybe even one more villain. So who knows, maybe I'll put Chameleon's cards in here when that stretch goal box comes. I don't know yet, but that's a thought. Another couple of really simple ones, Gwenpool. Gwenpool was in that stretch goal box, but she's a Deadpool character, right? And guess what? There is so much room in this Deadpool box. It's crazy how much room there was. So of course, you can see here she's at the bottom. Sorry, this is tricky to do one-handed, but there's Gwenpool. There was absolutely room to add her in here. And after all said and done, there's still plenty of room in this box. There are, let me see, once I fit him in there, right? That's nice and full. But look how much room is underneath all this Deadpool challenge. So much. I, too bad we're not getting other Deadpool characters because if we were, boom, there would totally be ample space there. So that's another deck taken care of from the stretch goal boxes. In here, the X-Force box, I got a little bit more creative. Um, I did this. I added villains and heroes from the Mojo-verse. So you'll see here, underneath Domino, I have Dazzler, Spiral, and Longshot. Because from just based on little things I remember, 
Longshot and Spiral were absolutely from the Mojoverse, and I think Dazzler and Longshot kind of have a thing in the comics, if I'm not mistaken, so I just put them together in here. So thematically, maybe if you're a hardcore comics fan, you're probably thinking that makes zero sense, and you're probably right, you would know better than me, but to my brain, that fits together well. And then the villains in here, obviously Spiral fits, so her stuff goes in here, and then there's Mojo, because he's part of the Mojoverse, for obvious reasons. So that takes care of three hero decks, and two villain decks. Five decks in total that I can remove from that box. Already, that's clearing a crap ton of space. And there was, as you can see, totally room for it in the X-Force box. Now we're looking at the Season 1 expansions because those boxes, due to how small they were, like they really didn't come with much, as you can see, there was beautiful space to add stuff. So this, for example, is the Guardians of the Galaxy box, right? It was very simple what to do here. See this? This whole well right here is just the heroes that come in this box. It's just Groot, Rocket, Gamora, and Star-Lord all sleeved, and they just perfectly fit in that giant well, right? And then on this well, it was completely empty, so of course it made 100% sense put in all the other Guardians that didn't come here. All the other ones from the stretch goal box, right? So Drax is in here. Of course he is. So is Yondu. So is Nebula. And so is Mantis. That way I got all my Guardians characters in one place. And that's not all. This was a little bit more of a creative leap, but I did this anyway, again, just because I needed the space and it made sense to me, is Ronan is in here. Ronan is a villain in here. But also I figured... Kang is a very cosmic villain, and these are very cosmic characters. So I needed the space to get rid of an extra deck from that box, so I just took out Kang's deck of cards and put him in here. And he's also blue. He's a blue cosmic villain, just like Ronan. So it's, it's a mnemonic thing, for sure. It might make zero sense if you're looking at it from a comic storyline perspective, but it makes sense to me. I know, oh, the two cosmic blue bad guys are in this box. So there you go. There's Guardians. Spider-Man box, way simpler, right? There's a lot of Spider-Man characters. Again, everybody's sleeved. Look how much room I still have here for another Spider-Hero. So when I get, let's say, Cosmic Spider-Man in the new box, he's absolutely going in here because there's so much room for him in here. Who only knows how much room is going to be in the Spider-Geddon corset? But I also put Spider-Man 2099 in here because that freed up one deck right there. Then I put Spider-Woman, as you can see. I also put Venom. Where is he? He's at the back. Venom, because he absolutely goes with Spider-Man, so why not? So not only is Venom's hero deck in here, but underneath Green Goblin, I have put Venom's villain deck and Carnage's villain deck, because Venom and Carnage go together so well. So if you're keeping track... That is 2099, Spider-Woman, Venom, Venom Villain, and Carnage. That's five decks I was able to take out of there to make space and put in here. And there's still so much room left over. And in here, there were also five decks. I added Drax, Gamora, Nebula, Yondu, and Kang. Ten decks I was able to clear from stretch goal boxes. Saved so much space. And last but not least, here are the other two Season 1 expansions. We got the Asgard and Black Panther ones. So, by now you should probably guess what it is I did. So, first of all, look how much space there still is in here with everybody sleeved. But, I added... Who did I add in here? Was it just one person? I think I did just add one person, yeah. All I added in here was Hela. Villain decks take up more space than hero decks, so taking out one villain still made a difference. Removing her from that still made a difference. So all of Hela's cards are in here. She's a Thor villain. This is basically a Ragnarok box. I mean, let's be real. So putting her in here completely makes sense. And given the ample space I have, I am 1,000% putting Kid Loki in here. And who knows, if we get a Lady Sif stretch goal, which would be really nice... She's going in here too. Finally, Black Panther. This was uh, a little bit more imaginative on my part, but 
it makes sense to me and hopefully it'll make sense to you. First of all, as soon as I remove this, you'll see characters who do not belong in here. Feral and Wolfsbane. I put Feral and Wolfsbane in this Black Panther box because, and this is just my silly way of thinking, Black Panther is a panther. He's a jungle cat. So are they. They are jungle cats. So I put jungle cats all together in this box. I also put Okoye. She was from the stretch goal box and she should absolutely be in here. Okoye makes a hundred thousand percent sense in this box. I don't even need to explain myself there. Finally, the last thing that I did was I added villains to this box in the form of, first of all, Namor. Namor is in here. His villain and hero decks are both in here because I knew Namor was going to show up in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So that gave me a perfect excuse to take two decks out of there, a villain and a hero deck, and put them in here. Boom, beautiful, saved room. This is now chock full. And I also added the villain deck for Shadow King because in the X-Men cartoon, when they encounter Shadow King, they encounter him in a village in Africa. So I figured, okay, he lives in Africa. This is the Wakanda box. Let me just throw him in here. It makes sense to me. I get to remove another deck from the stretch goal box. And that's what I did for everything. That's all my crazy way of thinking. Maybe you find this all furiously wrong and you hate this and you hate me for doing it, but I'll tell you, it has saved me a hell of a lot of time and effort trying to think of more efficient ways to store things outside of the boxes because I want to keep all these boxes because I like them so much. So that's how all the storage solution has worked out for me. Everything's kind of here. I know where everything is and who is where. And uh, so far, it has never steered me wrong. Actually, uh, here's a quick edit because I filmed all of that footage before we ended the campaign. So now that the campaign's over and we know exactly who's going to be in our stretch goal box, I tried to see what I could fit. So we know that we're getting Kid Loki. He's a hero, right? So let's say, for example, I'm going to take War Machine. Thanks for helping me out here with this War Machine. I appreciate it. I'm going to take a deck of 12 hero cards. We're going to pretend this is Kid Loki's deck. As you can see, it's going to fit perfectly in there. And there's still room to spare. So I don't think there's another Asgardian hero, but we know... Kid Loki's cards will fit in here. Is there room for another villain deck? Well, let's ask my friend Kingpin, my favorite character in any comic book ever. Kingpin, you're going to help me out here. So we've got a villain deck. We have 12 master playing cards and we have all his threat cards too. So this is what a typical villain deck would be like. I don't sleeve the threats. I only sleeve the master plans because I'm weird like that. But we know we're getting Gore the God Butcher, for example. Can Gore the God Butcher fit in this box? The answer is yes. Another villain can fit in the box. Now, here are all the villain dashboards that I have in here. What happens if I go ahead and add kingpins? Is that going to make a scene? Is that going to cause problems? No. Is everything going to close properly still? Yes, it is. Look at that. It works. So I know Gore and Kid Loki are going in this box. I'm actually going to keep Enchantress in the stretch goal box when it comes out, even though she would fit in there. And the reason is Enchantress has that kind of cool but kind of annoying mechanic where you have to take henchmen from other villains' decks. So I'm going to keep her in the big box because that box will have a crap ton of villain decks that I can draw from. And that way I don't have to open a separate box every time I use Enchantress. So I'm going to keep her in the big box. But let's see if we can do that with some of the other expansion boxes now that we know the final tally of characters. So here's the Black Panther box again. We only got one villain, one character, as far as I can think of in the stretch goal box that would fit in this box or, you know, that would make sense in this box. And that would be Claw because Claw is a Black Panther villain. So once again, let's grab our Kingpin villain cards and let's see, let's drop him on top of Killmonger. Hmm. OK, it's a little tight. Yeah, I don't think Claw is going to fit in this box. Hmm. That's a shame. But there might be something we can do. Let's see here. What can we do? Yeah, because we have Namor in here. And everything's kind of full up. So you know what? Maybe this box is pretty full. We can't put Claw in here. 
Uh, well, we tried. At least we know. However, here's the Guardians box. We now know that High Evolutionary is going to be a villain in the Kickstarter multiverse box. So let's see if we can fit a villain in here. I think we can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's almost no overlap. We can do that. Here are the villain cards I have in here already. Can I add Kingpins to the list right there without it being an issue? Yeah. So High Evolutionary's cards are going in this box. In fact, High Evolutionary has fewer cards. If I remember right, his deck is smaller than a normal villain deck um, or something along those lines. He has a weird deck. So he will fit in here no problem, in fact. So that gets another deck out of the stretch goal box. Beautiful. But now comes the million dollar question. Can I fit any new Spider-Man characters into the Spider-Man box? Well, the villain tray looks a little full. I've got Green Goblin, Venom, and Carnage in there. I think adding... I'm surprised actually that I never added Kingpin to this, but yeah, adding another villain in here is out of the question. However... There is plenty of room for another hero deck. Look at that. Yeah, War Machine fits in there perfectly, which means I can get the Cyborg Spider-Man deck out of the stretch goal box and pop it in here. So that's where that's going to go, which gets me another deck. Perfect. Now, I can't put any villains in here, but can I fit at least one more villain in my Sinister Six box? Uh, let's see. Pray for me. Pray for me, people. Let's see, will Kingpin, that looks like it's full. So let's see, will Kingpin fit here? Yes, he will. Yeah, that's fine. That'll get me one more villain. Let's see, I keep all the dashboards in this tray here. Can I sneak one more dashboard in this tray without it getting messy? Yeah, I can. So that's what's going to happen. There's going to be one more villain who gets thrown into the Sinister Six box next year. I'm going to probably make it the Shocker because he's kind of a petty thug. So I feel like we can get him in there and he'll fit in with Rhino because Rhino's in there. They can be friends. They can hang out and talk trash about me uh, when I'm not using the Sinister Six box. So there we go. We get a few decks, not a bunch, but we get a few decks out of the Stretch Goal box, which is going to free up a lot of space so that when all the cards are sleeved, they'll still fit in there nicely without any issue of spillage or things getting wrecked. That's what I like to see. And hey, you know what? Just as a little bonus, let's try just one more. So I have my Fantastic Four box here. Guess who's a Fantastic Four villain? I'll give you a hint. His name rhymes with Schmolschman. So can I fit Mole Man in this box? Let's see. All right. So let's get my trusty Kingpin deck. Thank you, Kingpin. Let's put him right there on top of Sue Storm. Yeah. The villain cards will fit. Um, okay, now let's see what happens if I slap the cover on top of it and I add Mole Man's villain dashboard. Hey, that's looking good. That's looking very good. All right, but now the locations go on top. Mole Man comes with a Monster Isle location. So let me pretend that that is it right there. Can I close up the box and make everything fit nice and snug without... Any kind of problem? Oh, that's beautiful. So we know where Mole Man's going to live when he shows up. And that's right there. All right, that's it. That's my unorthodox Marvel United storage solution. I hope if at least one person thought that that was a neat idea and that they'll consider trying it, great. If not, I hope I just entertain you with how bafflingly silly my storage is. I just, I know it probably makes no sense to anybody but me, but... Everything has its place when I play and I play randomly. Uh, as soon as, you know, a, a name comes up, right? If a name comes up and it says, okay, you got to fight Namor. I know exactly what box Namor is in. I know where to find him. I know where to find his piece. I know where to find his cards. That goes for everybody. It's gotten to the point where even though Spider-Man 2099 did not come in the Spider-Man box, my brain knows he's in the Spider-Man box. It's all second nature now. So it works out. I like it, and I'm looking forward to implementing them whenever Season 3 arrives at our doorsteps. So until then, stay tuned to Digital Charcuterie for more Marvel United goodness, and whatever may come next in the Master Plan.